Welcome to Pod Nuts Daily for August 25th, 2008, episode number 63. Um, I had an announcement. Um, I can't remember what it's about. I wanted to announce something on the show today. Um, I'll think of it later. Uh, first computer I worked on it was a desktop. It was getting the blue screen of death. And um, it was one of the ones where you can't really read the blue screen of death because computer starts up, tries to load Windows, gets halfway into there. You get the blue screen real quick, and then it stops and then reboots. Now, you can get the blue screen to stay. It's one of the options on um, – because usually when a computer cuts out right in the middle of it trying to boot, Windows knows that. So next time it boots, it says, okay, Windows didn't boot correctly last time. Do you want to boot in safe mode? Do you want to boot with, you know, um, in last known good configuration, normal mode? Well, there's something on there. I think it's boot logging or one of the options there allows you to not, allows the computer not to reboot once it hits the blue screen of death so you can read it. So check out that feature if you're getting a blue screen and you want to read it. Um, this computer, we ran check disk. We didn't even run check disk slash R. We just ran check disk. It handled the blue screen. And the computer started okay. It was it was just so infested with with spyware and whatnot. But at least it booted. What, one of the problems it did have, though, along with uh, the blue screen, was an error an error in the boot ini file. And there's a, a utility called boot cfg. It's in the recovery console. And there's a bunch of options where it allows you to uh, alter the boot. INI file or rebuild the boot INI file. It's a decent uh, utility. We used it a couple times. Uh, we I was going to use it this time, but we actually ended up doing a restall. The, the system was pretty beat. The, the operating system was pretty beat, and um, it was beyond. It was spyware viruses, and it was just really ripped apart. So we just did a reinstall. So we didn't end up using boot CFG. But check that utility out. It's in the recovery console in the Windows uh, Windows disk. Okay, let me see if I can remember what I was. The announcement I was going to make. Um, I'm trying to think here. Those of you listening to the audio, you're not going to get this. It's a joke, but um, the people watching the video will understand what I'm talking about. Okay, I can't remember the announcement. I'll have to get to it later. Um, computer wouldn't boot. Okay, I got a desktop here. Wouldn't boot. Okay, wouldn't boot. Wouldn't get lights. Wouldn't get nothing. Uh, by the way, Eric, who is L. Burrow in the Podnuts forums. He actually came to the shop on Saturday and helped us out. Um, he might be coming around every, uh, every like, sometime on the weekends, and uh, he is volunteering his services. He wants to uh, just get into the field. He wants to get some more experience, and um, he's going to help us out. And we're going to help him out with that. So, Eric actually was working on this computer this weekend. It was a um, desktop, wouldn't boot. It wouldn't. It wouldn't even power on. Nothing. So. I didn't make the, the mistake like I did last time, just telling the customer it's the power supply. It could be the motherboard. So it turned out it was a bad power supply. We replaced the power supply. The computer at least powered up, but it would not boot, I think, past the flash screen, the beginning screen. Um, it was a, what was it, gateway? Or it could have been a custom computer. It wouldn't boot into Windows, let's put it that way, and it wouldn't even give us an error. I think it just hung up. Well, Eric uh, started swapping out pieces of RAM, and found that once one of the sticks of RAM was bad. So we replaced that stick of RAM. Everything worked fine. Just optimized the machine a little bit more and um, gave it back to the customer. So it was actually RAM that was causing that problem. Um, this is something my, my dad had brought to my attention earlier today. He, um, when he boots computers into safe mode, you know the, the window you get when you boot a computer into safe mode, the first window that says, do you really want to go into safe mode or do you want to use system restore? It's a yes or no window. Um, apparently, if you, some, some computers, if you don't do anything with that window and just leave it up, it goes away. But it also, safe mode, in some cases, won't even start Explorer. So all you see is a black screen with safe mode in the top, top and bottom corners of the screen, and you can't do anything. And if your task manager is disabled for whatever reason, you can't even open that up to get to Explorer. So um, he found that when you do hit yes at that window, Explorer opens. So if you're trying to get into safe mode and you you don't click yes or no at that window, you might find that Explorer won't open. And if your task manager is disabled, you can't even get to a run prompt to, uh, to open it. So that was something he brought to my attention. That's something I didn't know. A couple apples came in this week. Had an, it was funny. The app, two apples came in the day Eric came and helped us. And um, Eric, the, one of the first posts that Eric had ever posted in the Podnuts forums was, I hate Apple, and, this is the and these are the reasons why. So 
I thought it was fitting that we got a couple apples in the day he decided to help us. Um, I didn't make him work on them, by the way. Actually, he did work on one. He did work on one, by the way. Um, but I had an iMac that came in. It was an iMac. The newer iMacs are like silver. The model before these silver ones are were white. They're completely white. It was one of those. It was a G5 20-inch iMac. Um, once you hit the power button, the thing would light up for a split second and then just go out. So um, I figured out how to open an iMac yesterday uh, on Saturday. It's so easy. You, there's three screws at the bottom of the screen. You loosen them up, and then you just pull the whole front cover off. It f- comes off like a hinge. And the whole front cover is actually the whole computer. The back part is just a stand. So you just pull the whole computer off the stand, and then you can kind of lay the computer flat because the computer has a screen built in. There's a big panel with all the computer behind the panel. And um, we were messing around in there looking at things and seeing if there was any capacitors blown or whatnot. Couldn't find anything to the naked eye um, except the power supply that was in there. We took the power supply out. I took the power supply apart, and you could see that the capacitors were blown inside the power supply. So um, the computer needed a new power supply. So I went to price the power supply for this iMac online. It's like $179 just for the power supply. Nothing special about this particular power supply. Maybe a little smaller than a normal power supply, but nowhere near. Um, it doesn't, shouldn't have to cost that much. No way, no how. The thing is just a normal power supply in a bit of a smaller case. So um, we might end up just trying to replace the, the blown capacitors on there and see how that goes. Or the customer is going to uh, you know, have to dish out if he wants the iMac and, and get a new power supply. They're just so expensive. Not worth it. Um, thumbs down for Apple on that deal. Um, the other computer, this is the one that Eric actually worked on, was a PowerBook G4. Now, the customer brought it in. They said they left the computer on all night. Well, I guess laptops, that might be a bad thing. Normal computers, that's no problem. But a normal desktops, no problem. Um, but after they, the kid did this, it might the screen may have been closed the whole time. So it might have overheated or something. But... Now when you power the thing on, you get a video on the screen, you get an image, but it's like plaid, it's like plaid colored image. It's not a broken LCD panel because the the plaid pattern goes throughout the entire screen. And I also know it's not the LCD panel because when you hooked up an external monitor, we also have that plaid pattern on the external monitor. We tried resetting the PSU, I think it's called, which you can do on an, in an Apple by like pressing the power button down for five seconds and taking the battery out and AC adapter out and all that stuff. It's still happening. I did some research on it. It looks like it's a bad logic board. Apple calls them logic boards. It's basically a motherboard in PC terms. PC motherboard, Apple logic board. And um, it's like pretty expensive as well. It's like 275 is like the cheapest I could find that thing on eBay. That's including the shipping. 